Good, welcome. Um, so you might want two blocks for this class. You don't absolutely need them, but um, if you happen to have and or something that you can improvise with and it's convenient, then you could grab them. Um, and I'm gonna look a little bit at, at hip mobility today. I'm always really interested in um, sort of looking at the difference between people who spend a lot of time sitting in chairs and people who spend a lot of time squatting. Um, there's, there isn't a, bit, a lot of research on, on how that affects the body um, and how that affects our aging process especially. Um, so there's a, quite a bit of benefit in being able to get low to the ground and to, to sit into your hips in that way um, or to spend time sitting on the ground, um, which maybe some of us don't do that often. Um, and there's even things like a, a sit to stand test where they test um, your ability to come from seated on the ground or in a chair up to standing without using your hands. Um, and often this is related even to longevity. So, so people who are able to comfortably get up and down off the floor even live longer perhaps than people who can't. So we'll look at some fun ways to, to experiment with that today. And you can start lying on your back and just find a comfortable way to lie down. Maybe with your feet to the floor or with your legs out straight, whatever you prefer. And have your arms by your sides. And just take a few moments here to really let the shoulders and the head sink into your mat. Allow the hips to be heavy and feel the weight of your thigh bones dropping into the floor or towards the floor. And finding your breath here. Start to notice the breath as it travels in the nose the throat, filling the ribs so we can feel the breath in the chest, but we can also feel how the breath moves into the upper back. The shoulder blades might spread a little bit wider as we breathe in. And then as you're exhaling, there's another opportunity to really let go of the shoulders of the head and finding that quality of weight. And as you're continuing to breathe, you can start to find the impact of the breath in the belly as you're exhaling, feeling the belly drop in. Again, maybe an opportunity to settle a little bit more in the hips and the low body. So let's take a few more breaths here. Maybe finding your ujjayi breath if that's part of your practice. Also just allowing this attention to your breathing to guide your awareness into the space of your physical body. So you can really notice how you're feeling. You can notice where you feel good, where you feel open, where you're already maybe noticing some of the little tensions or habitual patterns of holding that we carry in the body. And think of this as just an opportunity to gather information so that we know where we're at. We know then how we can best practice in a way that honors where the body is today. And then from here, we'll draw the knees into the chest and take your hands or your arms around your shins, maybe just rocking a little bit side to side. So you're massaging your back against the floor. Good. And then we'll take the hands to the tops of the knees. As you inhale, you can press your knees away from your torso, and then we'll exhale to split the knees apart, so bringing each knee out to each side, and then circle them back in towards the chest. So inhaling the knees away from the torso, exhaling to split the knees apart, out to the sides, into the chest, bringing the knees together, and then just keep going with your own smooth breathing through this circling pattern. And seeing if you can kind of explore the whole range of motion in the hip socket and make it as smooth as possible. Maybe you're even able to make the circles a little bit wider as you repeat the pattern. Or if you notice an area that's a little bit sticky or tense, you can go especially slowly through that area so that you can kind of iron out any of those little feelings of bumpiness along the path. And then we'll change directions with your next inhale. You can split the knees out to the sides and then take them away from the torso and bring them together. As you exhale, the knees come back into the chest. So moving in that direction again with your own smooth pattern of breathing. Just keep circling around. 
And exploring the whole range of motion in the hip joint. And it's kind of a feeling of like greasing the joint so we get a, a more even, easeful circling around as we repeat the pattern. Yeah, and then we can bring the soles of the feet to the floor and take your arms out about shoulder height. We'll shift the hips a little bit over to the right and then settle the knees down to the left. Just coming into an easeful twist. You can choose how much spinal twist you like by how you set up your knees. So if we allow the knees to be staggered, that's less twist in the spine. If we stack the knees, that's a little bit more twist in the spine. And just comfortably peeling your low back away from the floor and then really letting the upper back settle in towards the floor. And breathing along the right side of your body as you inhale. Feeling the belly drop in as you exhale. Notice that it allows you to settle a little bit more completely into your twist. Yeah, and then we'll inhale to pick up the knees back to center. Take your hips a little bit over to the left. Let the knees settle to the right. And again, just choosing how much twist you like by how you set up your legs so that the spine can just find a, a gentle, comfortable spiraling shape. And the hips twisting away from the floor, the upper back settling into the floor, especially letting your left shoulder be nice and heavy. And then we'll inhale to bring the knees back to center. <clears throat> and from here, you can just reach your arms up alongside your ears as you inhale. Take a nice long stretch back through your fingers. Exhaling to roll completely onto your right side, bringing your left hand to the floor. You can bring yourself up to a seat. And from there, we'll lean back into the hands and bring the soles of the feet to the floor in front of you. And then just for a few moments, we'll find a kind of windshield wiper in the leg. So as you exhale, you can let the knees fall to one side and then inhale to come back to center. Exhale, falling over to the other side, inhaling to center. And just continue that for a few more moments, especially feeling the knee dropping in towards the center line on each side. So that internal rotation of the thigh bone as a perhaps unusual experience. We don't do so much of that movement in our regular lives. We can also notice that the outer leg as it drops outwards creates perhaps an opportunity for a little bit more range of motion in the hips. So you can really let both knees fall heavy on each side. Done. And then we'll come back to center. You can maybe sit up a little bit taller by coming up onto your finger pads if that works for you. Still leaning back into your hands. We'll now cross the right ankle just above the left knee. So I'm getting more of that feeling of the thigh bone rolling out in the hip socket. As you inhale, we're now lifting the chest up towards the right shin and seeing if we can grow the spine really long to move into that stretch in the outer right hip. As you exhale, rounding away from that stretch, you can ease towards the back edge of your sits bones. Inhale to come forward to the front edge of the sits bones, seeing if you can really lift up onto the front of your hips. Exhale, easing back off of those bones, rounding the spine. Inhale again, seeing if we can go long in the spine, lift the chest right up towards your right shin. Exhale to round. We'll do a few more rounds. If you want to make it slightly more intense, you could step your left foot in towards you and then just make sure you can really still lift up out of the hips as you're inhaling and getting that space in your low back. So trying to feel this really as a movement of your hips and feel that transition of weight across the pelvis as the first phase and then the spine just simply follows that impulse. And 
Take one more inhale to reach up nice and tall. And then we'll exhale to ease back into the hands. You can set the hands so that the fingers turn in towards your hips. We'll set the right foot back to the floor, the feet about hip width apart. Roll your shoulders back and then pressing into the hands and the feet, coming up into an altar shape. So really lift your hips up, lift your chest up. If it's comfortable, letting your head drop back to open the throat. Big breath in here through the nose. Exhale to sigh it out through the mouth. And we'll bring the chin back to the chest as you inhale and exhale to sit your hips back to the floor. And then making sure you have enough space here so that you can lean back into your hands and cross the left ankle now over your right knee. You might come up onto your fingertips as you inhale, shifting towards the front edge of your sits bones, see if you can grow your ribs up towards your left shin. And as you're exhaling, you're leaning away, rounding through the back. Inhale again to tilt the hips forward, lengthen the spine, lift the heart, and exhale to round away from that sensation in the outer left hip. So just keep going again with your own smooth breath, finding that shifting of the weight in the hips as the first movement, the spine then follows. You could make it more intense by stepping your right foot closer in towards you. <clears throat> so that as you're inhaling, you're getting a more narrow fold at the hip creases. And just making sure that there's no discomfort in the left knee here. We can keep the left foot kind of flexed so the ankle is long on both sides. One more inhale, exhale to round out. Again, set the hands into the floor, fingers in towards your hips, both feet to the mat, feet about hip width apart, roll the shoulders back. Again, as you inhale, come into that tabletop shape, lifting the hips, lifting the chest, letting the head drop back if you're able. Nice big breath here, in through the nose, sigh it out through the mouth. Chin back to the chest on the inhale. Exhale to sit the hips down. And from here, rocking your weight out of your hands so that you can come forward with the torso and really lean into your feet. We'll reach the arms forward and then you'll see if you're able to do this with your arms reaching forward. If not, you can use your hands. Um, there's no punishment for using your hands. We just want to notice if we need them. We're going to see if we can rock more into the feet so we might bring them closer into the hips if we're able. And if you can get them in really close and if you can lean forward into the balls of the feet, then maybe you can rock right up onto your feet and come up to standing. And again, if you needed your hands to get there, then use your hands. <laughs> um, and then we'll just find a nice tall stance at the top of the mat. And with an inhale, and reach your arms up alongside your ears, stretching up through the fingertips. Exhaling to fold forward, letting the hands drape towards the floor. Inhale, reaching your ribs forward, lengthening out through the spine. And exhaling to scoop in the belly, folding a little bit more deeply. And pressing into the feet, find that kind of half lift shape and then keep coming up. Reach your arms all the way back up to the ceiling. Nice tall stretch. Exhaling the hands to the center of the chest. So we'll do that twice more. Inhaling to reach the arms up. Exhaling, folding. You can bend the knees as much as you need to to let the hands drape down. Inhale to a half lift. Maybe hands to your shins is helpful. Exhale to settle back down. Again, the knees can bend to help you fold. Pressing into the feet, long spine. Inhale all the way back up, lengthening up through the fingertips. Exhaling the hands to the center of the chest. Once more, inhaling to reach the arms up. Exhaling to fold. Inhaling to come halfway up, the ribs reaching forward. Exhaling to empty and sink back down. Pressing into the feet, long spine. Inhale, grow all the way back up to standing. Big, tall reach. Exhaling the hands to the center of the chest. And we'll inhale again to reach the arms up tall. Exhaling to fold, bringing your hands towards the floor. Inhaling to come halfway up, reaching your ribs forward. Exhale to soften down, stepping your right foot back. And we'll inhale here to reach the ribs forward, lengthening out through the torso, and then exhale to take your left arm up towards the ceiling. So just opening into a nice twist here, seeing if you can lift a little bit through the right hip, sink the left hip, so really squaring the hips. Get longer through the torso each time you're breathing in. And then as you're exhaling, rolling the left side ribs open, finding maybe a little bit more of a squeezing out of your center body. So really feeling that the twist arrives from the core and not from turning your hips. And with your next exhale, you bring your left hand back down towards the floor. 
And then we'll keep the left foot where it is and just start to straighten out your left leg. So you could come up onto your fingertips here or you might find that this is where those blocks come in handy. You can just come up onto your blocks if you have them, if you need them. So we're high on the ball of the right foot, seeing if we can send both hips up really high into space. Also, especially drawing your left hip back so the hips are square, and then reaching your ribs forward, and as you're exhaling with lots of length in your spine, seeing if you can just settle a little bit more into the fold over your left leg. A few big breaths here, and finding that sensation of stretch, particularly in the back of your left leg, as you melt your heart towards your left toes. And then we'll bend the left knee and bring your hands flat to the floor. So move the blocks away if you're using them. Press the mat away from you, stepping back to plank. And then just from here, finding your own path to downward dog. So you can make it as simple as, or as complex as you like. Maybe moving down on the exhale, knees to the mat first, or one straight line, inhaling into cobra or upward dog. Exhaling, the hips go up and back, moving into downward dog. Some variation on that theme. Good. Then we'll inhale to reach the right leg up and back. Exhale, pull the knee into the chest. Step the right foot forward towards your hands. Inhaling to reach the ribs forward. Exhaling to take your right arm up towards the ceiling. Moving again into this twisted shape, seeing if you can square the hips a little bit more. So some buoyancy in your left hip, a little bit more weight in the right hip. Get longer through the torso, reach the ribs forward. Rolling your heart open, the right side body turning up towards the ceiling. You really feel how the ribs turn away from the hips. And then we'll exhale to bring the right hand back down towards the floor. And then keeping that right foot where it is and you slowly start to straighten out the legs and either coming up onto your fingertips or finding those blocks to give you longer arms. The left heel lifting away from the floor. We're sending both hips up high. Kind of squeeze your legs towards each other here. You can feel like, like scissors magnetized towards the same center line. That right hip moving back, the heart reaching forward, and then with as much length as possible, especially in the low back, we'll see if we can settle more comfortably over that right leg. I'm just taking a few steady breaths here, especially breathing into sensation in the back of your right leg so that we can soften out that stretch. And then we'll bend the right knee and step the left foot forward to meet the right. Inhale to come halfway up. Exhale to sink back down. Pressing into the feet, inhaling to come all the way up. Nice tall reach. Exhaling the hands to the center of the chest. We'll inhale to reach the arms up tall. Exhaling to fold, bringing the hands towards the floor. Inhale halfway up, reaching the ribs forward. Exhale, softening, stepping your left foot back. And, and then from here, we're gonna bring the hands to the inside of the right foot. You can wiggle your right foot a little bit more to the right. Bring your left knee down to the mat. We'll turn the right toes out to the right and set the left hand off to the left. Letting your hips sink really low. You can bring your right hand to the inside of your right thigh. So now we're really letting that right leg kind of drop off to the right side, seeing if we can feel the thigh bone roll slightly outwards in the hip socket and then just let the weight of the hips settle so that we can find some space across the front of the left hip crease maybe you're getting a little bit longer in the belly here you can lift the chest you can start to roll your right shoulder gently open a few breaths here and seeing if you can really ease the right thigh bone outwards as the hips settle down Good. and then we'll bring the hands back towards the inside of the right foot and straighten out your left leg. Maybe step it in just a little bit closer. And now we'll again straighten out the right leg. So now we're folding to the inside of the right leg. You could use your blocks again under your hands or come up onto your fingertips. See if you can send your hips up really high, reach the ribs forward, and then maybe you can fold a little bit deeper. So it's a, a different set of sensations here to fold towards the inside of the leg. Um, still feeling that stretch along the back of your right thigh, but maybe we're also now feeling a little bit of a tug along the inner line of the right leg as we settle the torso down. We'll just take a few steady breaths here. 
And you can find that same sense of you know, squeezing the inner lines of the legs towards center. Maybe that helps you to send your hips up a little bit higher. And then bending your right knee, rooting the hands shoulder width apart and step back to plank. And again, just finding your own path to downward dog. And from here, we'll inhale to take the left leg up and back. Exhale, now stepping your left foot towards the outside of your left hand. And bring your right knee down to the mat. Turn your left toes off to the left. Set your right hand off to the right. See if you can let the hips really sink. And bring your left hand to the inner left thigh. We're not pushing the leg outwards. We're just letting the hand rest there and seeing if we can feel how the left thigh bone can really settle outwards in the hip socket. Maybe you can lengthen the belly. You might gently roll the heart open. So there's a little bit of a twisting sensation here. But just mostly focusing on how you can let go in the hips a little bit more so that the front of the right hip sinks down towards the floor and that left thigh can just keep easing outwards in the hip socket. And then we'll slowly bring the hands back down to the floor. So I'm straightening out your left toes and then straightening the right leg, straightening the left leg, maybe coming up onto your fingertips. Again, that right foot might step in a little bit closer if it feels like it's back too far. I'm seeing if you can send your hips up really nice and high and then start to fold to the inside of your left leg and noticing how that feels to find the torso resting more towards the inner thigh. Even as we still look for all those sensations of lifting the hips and lengthening the heart forward and down. So as much space in your low back, as much breath in your low back as you can find here. Yeah. And then we'll again bend the left knee, you can wiggle your left foot back in between your hands and step your right foot forward to meet the left. Inhale to come halfway up. Exhale to sink back down. Pressing into the feet, inhale to come all the way up, arms reaching nice and tall. Exhaling the hands to the center of the chest. Inhale again to reach the arms up. Exhaling to fold, bringing the hands towards the floor. Inhaling halfway up, reaching the ribs forward. Exhaling to plant your hands and step or hop your feet back and then moving again with your own breath, your path to downward dog. Good. Then we'll inhale to reach the right leg up and back. Exhale, draw the knee into the chest, step the right foot forward towards your hands and place your left foot flat to the floor. Inhale to reach your arms up alongside your ears. And really let the hips settle here. And finding a kind of square quality in the hips so they don't have to be exactly square, but we're seeing if we can spiral the left thigh forward as we draw the right sits bone back and then lifting the belly away from the right thigh so we get some space in the left hip crease. Ribs growing up nice and tall. And then as you exhale, you can move into warrior two and you might find that you adjust your feet here so that you can comfortably spread across the front of your pelvis. Right knee, right toes pointing as straight forward as possible. And we'll keep letting the hips sink nice and low here. And then coming up onto the ball of your right foot, so lifting your right heel. See if you can again roll your right thigh bone out in your hip socket so that we find just a slight feeling of that external rotation and then we'll set the heel back down. I'm just feeling how that maybe changes a little bit of the sensation of the pose by having that thigh bone rolling outwards. And then straightening your right leg. Inhale to reach your right arm as far forward as you're able. Exhaling the right arm comes down, left arm up for a triangle pose. Sending your hips back, reaching your ribs forward, rolling your left side ribs open, get nice and long through the belly. And then we'll press down through the feet and inhale to come back up to standing. Exhaling to bend your right knee, warrior two. 
Inhaling to reverse warrior, sweeping the right arm back. Good, exhale, windmilling the hands down to the floor. And carefully step back to plank. Again, just moving with your own breath, finding your own path to downward dog. And then we'll inhale to take the left leg up and back. Exhale, bring the knee into the chest, stepping the left foot towards your hands. Spinning your right heel down to root the sole of the foot. Inhale, the arms coming up into warrior one. And seeing if we can again settle the hips. Spiral the right thigh forward as you draw the left sits bone back. And then lift the belly away from your left thigh. There's a good space in your right hip crease. You might feel here like you're kind of pushing off the ball of your right foot, but still keeping the outer right heel rooted so that we're not collapsing into that back leg. And then we'll exhale to roll into warrior two. Again, adjusting the feet as you need to so that the front of the pelvis is wide. And then here we'll come up onto the ball of the left foot. So lifting your left heel and seeing if you can roll that left thigh just slightly outwards in the hip socket and then settle the heel back down with that little bit of external rotation in your left thigh. And then we'll straighten the left leg. Inhale to reach your left arm forward. Exhaling the left arm down, the right arm up. And coming again into a triangle shape. Sending your hips back, ribs reaching forward, lengthening out the belly. You can feel the strength of your legs here, so the heels might kind of gently hug towards each other so that there's some magnetism again towards the center line. And hugging your left thigh and left kneecap up towards the left hip crease so the left leg can perhaps become a little bit straighter. And then we'll press down through the feet, inhale to come back up to standing. <clears throat> Exhale to bend the left knee. Inhaling to reverse warrior, the left side body long. Exhale to windmill the hands down. Stepping back to plank. And again, your own breath, your own path to downward dog. <clears throat> okay. Just take a few breaths here. So you can really send your hips up nice and high. And then keeping a sense of lift in the hips, length in the low spine. Maybe you can reach your heels away from your hips for more space down the backs of your legs. And the end of your next exhaling, bending your knees, look forward, step your feet, or maybe hop your feet up towards your hands. We'll inhale to come halfway up. Exhale to sink back down. Pressing into the feet, inhaling all the way up, arms reaching nice and tall. Exhaling the hands to the center of the chest. And inhaling again to reach your arms up tall. Exhaling to fold forward, hands towards the floor. And inhaling halfway up, the ribs forward. Exhaling to soften down, planting the hands, stepping or hopping back again with your own breath, finding a path to downward dog. So maybe you're exhaling to lower, inhaling to stretch the belly long, exhaling to take the hips up and back or something else that works for you. And we'll inhale to reach the right leg up and back. Exhale, knee into the chest, stepping the right foot towards your hands, bringing your left foot flat to the floor. Again, inhale to come up, warrior one. And we'll exhale to settle into warrior two, arms out, shoulder height, adjusting the feet once more as you need to. Once more, lifting that right heel and seeing if you can roll the right thigh bone outwards and then set the heel back down with that new shape in the hip. And then we'll inhale here to reach the right arm back, reverse warrior. Exhaling to take your right arm to your right thigh, or if you like, you could bring your right hand down to the floor or block, whatever works for you. And seeing if you can keep that sense of wrapping your right hip in towards the midline, so the right thigh bone is just slightly rolling outwards. Right knee, right toes pointing in the same direction. And then we're rolling the left side ribs open, turning the heart up towards the ceiling. Nice long stretch out through your left fingers, breathing into your left side body. And then we'll exhale to bring the left hand back down towards the floor. Right hand also drops to the inside of your right foot if it's not really there. You might wiggle your right foot more to the right. And then we'll tuck the left toes under, 
From here, seeing if you can come down onto your forearms, or if you have blocks or something like blocks handy, you could bring your arms down onto that elevated support. Or if you don't have anything, you could just bend your elbows and sink as much as you're able towards the inside of your right leg. This time, instead of letting that leg fall outward, see maybe if you can hug the right thigh in towards your right side body. So we hold a little bit more of the structure, some strength in the inner line of the right leg, but then really let the hips go, even with that extra effort in your inner right thigh. So the fronts of the hips dropping down. If you need to modify by bringing your left knee to the floor, also a good option here. I'm just take a couple more really big, full, juicy breaths. Good, and then you can come back up onto your hands. Hands still to the inside of the right foot. We'll step the left foot to the outside of the left hand, turn the toes outwards, and sink into a squat. So see if you can let your hips drop as low as possible. Um, you might find that you have issues in the knee or the hip that don't allow you to sit this low. So other possibilities are that you're kind of up higher. You could even rest your forearms and your thighs or that you need to round a little bit more through the back. Um, but maybe eventually we're getting the knees nice and creased and then the hips really low. If your heels are not on the ground, that's fine. Hands towards the center of the chest and we'll just see if we can press the knees outwards as we rock weight towards the outer edge of the feet. And then maybe growing your heart up a little bit more towards your thumbs. And then we'll exhale to bring the hands back down towards the floor. Begin to straighten up your legs. We'll wiggle the feet in a little bit closer. Maybe hip width apart, maybe all the way towards each other. Inhale to come halfway up. Exhale to sink back down to that fold. Pressing into the feet. Inhaling to come all the way up. Arms reaching up for the ceiling. Exhaling to bring the hands to the center of the chest. Again. Shifting your weight into your right foot. You can pick up your left knee and then cross your left ankle just above your right knee. And then from here, we can take the hands to the center of the chest. Sit your hips low and start to reach your hips back as you reach the heart forward. You might even kind of use your thumbs to guide the chest forward away from the hips as you keep creasing at your hips. Left ankle stays <clears throat> flexed on both sides. Always helpful to have a wall if you're falling over. <laughs> um, so that the, sorry, left ankle long on both sides so that the foot is in a kind of flex shape. We might even see here if we can fold a little bit deeper, so maybe forearms to that left shin, or maybe even the hands towards the floor. You can just find your own edge here and seeing if you can keep the hips reaching back, the heart reaching forward. So really getting into the stretch of the outer left hip. Yeah, and then however low you've come, you find the way slowly back up. So maybe forearms back to your calf, hands to the center of the heart. We'll start to lift up the torso, pick up that left knee, and then stepping the left foot back, we'll open up into warrior two again. Arms out, shoulder height, sitting through your hips, see if you can find once more that kind of outward rotation in your right thigh bone. And we'll inhale here to reverse warrior. Exhaling to bring the right hand in front and to the right of your right foot and tiptoe your left foot in. Moving then into a half moon shape, Ardha Chandrasana, so the left leg lifts parallel to the floor, left arm reaching up. Another great opportunity to use your block here under your right hand if you feel that you need it. And rooting strongly down through that right foot, reaching strongly back through your left foot, stretching long through the belly, keep rolling your left side ribs open. And and then we'll slowly bend the right knee, big step back with the left foot, landing in warrior two. And we'll straighten the right leg here. You can turn your right toes towards the left, so toes angling in, hands towards the hips, inhaling to lift the center of the chest, and then exhaling to fold, bringing your hands towards the floor. Inhale to reach your ribs forward. Exhale, scooping the belly in, folding a little bit deeper. Maybe your hands come flat to the floor. I'm gonna take a few breaths here. Really using the fronts of the legs, again, to create some space in the backs of the legs. So seeing if you can guide your kneecaps, your thighs, um, or your, the fronts of your thighs up towards the hip creases. And breathing into the backs of the legs, breathing into the wide space of your base of your pelvis. 
maybe a little bit of a, a feeling of internal rotation of the thighs here. So the thigh bones rolling slightly inward so that we can press the inner thighs back and spread the sits bones even wider apart. And that helps us to get the crease that we want at the hips to feel more ease in the fold. And then we'll inhale to come back up about halfway. Maybe you're up on your fingertips. Exhale, hands to your hips. Inhaling to come all the way up to standing. Turning your right toes forward, bending your right knee, warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior, the right arm sweeping back. Exhale, the hands to the floor. Stepping back to plank, moving with your own breath, your path to downward dog. Inhale to reach the left leg up and back. Exhale the knee into the chest, stepping the left foot forward. Right foot pivots to the floor, inhaling up to warrior one. And, and then exhaling warrior two, arms out shoulder height. I'm gonna be lifting the left heel for a moment here to get that rolling out of the thigh bone. And then you can settle the heel back down with that new sense of rotation in the hip. We'll inhale to reverse warrior, the left arm reaches back. Exhaling, left forearm to the left thigh, or maybe your left hand down to the floor or a block, if that seems accessible, useful to you. And bending your left knee, nice 90 degree angle if you're able. So making sure the knee, the toes are pointing straight forward. See if you can wrap the left hip into the midline and then roll the right side ribs open. So we should feel a good amount of sensation around the outer left hip here as we pull that hip into center and then turn the heart up towards the ceiling. Nice breath into the right side body, the right side ribs, the right side waist. And then we'll exhale to bring both hands down to the inside of the left foot. You can wiggle the left foot out to the left. <clears throat> Tuck your right toes under. Coming down here again onto your forearms or forearms to blocks or just bending the elbows so that you can sink towards the inside of your left leg. Option to bring the right knee to the mat again if the straight leg is too strenuous. And then seeing this time if we can hug the left thigh into the body. So rather than letting it fall outwards, we're holding it in a neutral shape. So there's some effort in the inner line of the leg and still letting the hips drop down. So the front of the right hip gets long. You feel again, sensation around the outer left hip. Really filling the shape with breath so that any sensations that <clears throat> might otherwise be overwhelming can be more neutral or interesting or useful or even soft. And then you can come back up onto your hands inside of the left foot. We'll step the right foot forward to the outside of the right hand. And again, turning your toes outwards and sinking into your squat. So just whatever shape is available to you as deep as you can. Really seeing if you can fold at the knees, fold at the hips. Bring weight towards the outer edges of the feet. Maybe you can park your elbows to the inner knees, palms together, heart up towards your thumbs. And again, really focusing on your breath here so that the breath can help you to navigate any strong sensations that arise. Or maybe they don't. If you spend enough time doing this shape, um, then it actually doesn't have to be difficult. So great way to pass the time as you're at home watching Netflix or doing whatever it is that you're doing in front of your computer all the time. Um, just giving yourself more opportunities to get into the shape can be really helpful. And then we'll bring the hands down towards the floor. Again, we can start to straighten up the legs, wiggle the feet in, maybe hip width apart, maybe all the way together. Inhale to come halfway up. Exhale to sink back down. Pressing into the feet, inhale to grow all the way up, arms reaching for the ceiling. Exhaling hands to the center of the chest. Good. And then shifting your weight into your left foot, we'll pick up the right knee, crossing the right ankle just above the left knee. Start to sit down through your hips, hands together at the center of the chest. So again, if you can take your hips back as you reach your heart forward, so you get long through the spine. Maybe you can keep folding here, 
Maybe your forearms can come down onto that right shin or maybe hands even can settle towards the floor. So just finding your own comfortable edge. And it happens that we sometimes fall out of this shape. And so we don't have to worry if that's what has happened to us. So just find our way slowly back in and then step by step, making sure that we're looking for that sensation in the outer right hip, not running away from it. So finding more space and breath and length in your low back, especially to help you get into that stretch. Good. And then we'll just as easily come back up. So hands back to the center of the chest and lifting the torso, picking up your right knee and then taking a big step back and we'll move again right into warrior two, arms out shoulder height, rolling that left thigh bone outwards in the hip socket. Let the hips sink nice and low, let the shoulders be relaxed. Yeah, and then we'll straighten the left leg, turn the left toes. Oh, did I miss something? Bending the limb, yeah, sorry, bending your left knee, <laughs> inhaling to reverse warrior, and then exhaling to move into Ardha Chandrasana. So we creep the right foot in, left foot, uh, left hand to the left and in front of your left foot. Again, use the block if you need to. And then just make sure you're really strong out through all of your limbs. So left leg working down into your mat, the right leg working back into space, arms reaching out wide. And the more we can use all of those limbs to help us grow outwards, and the more the balance becomes available. Also hugging in through your low belly so that you know where your center is. And then we'll bend the left knee, step that right foot back, landing again in warrior two. Now straightening your left leg, turning the left toes towards the right. Hands again to your hips. Inhale to lift the center of the chest. Exhaling to fold. Inhaling to reach the heart forward. Exhaling, sinking a little bit deeper. Maybe this time looping your first two fingers and thumb around the big toe on each side, um, if that feels available. Otherwise, you can just do the variation we had on the other side with the hands towards the floor. Seeing if we can get some more length in the back, so ribs reaching forward as you inhale, and then scooping the belly in, folding into that space between your thighs as you exhale. I'm just taking a few breaths here. And finding that length up the backs of the legs, the effort in the front of the legs, this little bit of rolling the thigh bones inwards in this shape to help us spread the sits bones apart, which helps us to find the fold at the fronts of the hips. Yeah, and then we'll inhale to come again about halfway up. You can bring your fingertips to the floor, exhaling the hands to the hips, inhaling to come up to standing, turning the left toes forward, arms out, warrior two. Inhale once more, reverse warrior, left side body long. Exhale, hands windmill down to the floor, stepping back to plank. And one more time, finding your own path to downward dog. And then we'll inhale once more to reach the right leg up and back. And exhale to hug the knee towards the chest. And now drop your right knee towards your right wrist and set the right shin bone down at an angle that works for you. It can be whatever angle you like. And then we'll start to sit the hips low. A little bit different than the pigeon we normally do. We're now gonna drop towards the right hip and bring that left knee out to the left so that we can create kind of a pinwheel shape in the leg. So seeing if you can set up a 90 degree bend in your left knee, 90 degree angle at the hips, and then a 90 degree bend at your right knee. Good. So this won't be as intense as we feel um, when we have the hips more square. And we'll just see if we can guide the body more towards the front edge of the mat and then start to fold over that right leg. Just down onto your forearms maybe or all the way down onto your forehead. We'll take a few breaths here. So again, it's less of a stretch and also less tension around the SI joint or around the knee. So it should be a, a fairly accessible shape for most bodies to settle here. And again, you don't have to come too low. You just find whatever edge works for you. And then we'll inhale to come back up. And now we see if we can start to turn the torso towards that left leg. So maybe the left hip sinks down a little bit and we're just looking for more of a, a twist. So not a fold, but seeing if you can turn your chest back towards your left foot. And we'll feel again this sensation of internal rotation of rolling the left thigh bone inwards in the hip socket to maybe its most extreme edge. So an, perhaps an unusual sensation. We don't explore it too often in 
yoga even, and definitely not in life. Good. And then we'll turn back towards center. <clears throat> now you can take that left leg behind you once more and square the hips, but stay upright. And we'll see if we can lift the hips a little bit away from the floor and actively squeeze the knees towards each other. Um, I can't do this anymore because I'm too pregnant, but maybe, and maybe you can't do it anyway, regardless of whether you're pregnant, because it's really hard, but maybe you're able to lift your hands away from the floor and bring them to the center of your chest. And you're still like, using your legs super strong to keep the hips lifted up away from your mat. So lots of effort in squeezing the knees towards center and then keeping your torso upright. We're getting a good stretch through the left hip crease, maybe through the front body. Good. And then we'll let the hips sink back down. Hands come back to the floor, rooting your hands, tucking your left toes under, taking your hips up and back, finding downward dog. And then inhaling the left leg up and back. Exhale the knee into the chest, bringing your left knee down towards your left wrist. Shin bone settles to the floor, right knee to the mat. And then we're leaning over to the left hip and finding again that pinwheel shape. So good 90 degree bend in each knee and then a sense of 90 degree bend at the hips and then turning your chest towards the top edge of your mat and start to fold forward over your front leg maybe you're coming down onto your forearms maybe you're able to ease down onto your forehead so we'll feel some sensation of stretch in the outer left hip but definitely not as intense as we might be used to if we've explored the pigeon shape that we kind of classically do in yoga just letting yourself settle nice and heavy here. Maybe enjoying that there's not any tug on the knee, not any stress on the back of the hips in this shape. And then we'll inhale to come back up. And now sitting a little bit more towards that right hip and turning towards your right leg. So seeing if you can just find an upright twist here with this same pinwheel shape in your legs and noticing the sensations that creates around the right hip and the right thigh. And if it feels awkward, then that's probably the right <laughs> shape to be in. It's just an, an unusual experience. Yeah, we'll turn back towards center. Now squaring the hips, so we'll take the right leg straight back behind you and come up onto your fingertips here. Good. And then seeing if you can start to squeeze the knees in towards each other to get the hips up away from the floor and stay really active in that lift. And then maybe you're able to take your hands off the mat and bring the hands together at the center of the chest. So really using your legs to hold yourself upright and the knees drawing towards the center line of the pelvis. Belly maybe hugging in so you can keep yourself a little bit taller. Find the stretch in the right hip crease, the length in the belly. And then we'll exhale to settle back down. The hands come back to the floor. Hips can lower. Bringing your hands in front of you. And tucking the right toes under. Picking yourself up once more to downward dog. Again. We'll inhale again to bring the right leg up and back. Exhale the knee into the chest. Lowering the right knee down. So that same shape that we had with the shin bone kind of sitting at the top of the mat. Let your right hip sink to the floor. Or bring your left knee out to the side. And then we'll turn the hips open and let both knees fall outwards. So the heels are still nice and wide. Good. And then we'll try not to use our hands for this next sequence. But again, if you need to, then do it. Um, just do what you can. But we're aiming to see if we can find the power in the legs to get us up away from the floor. So we're slowly going to start to roll towards the back edge of the mat. So that left knee pointing to the back of the mat, the right knee dropping inward. So just the opposite pinwheel that we had a moment ago. And then you're going to shift your weight into your left shin and see if you can step your right foot to the back of your mat so um, in a kind of lunge shape in the right leg right foot in front of your left shin and, and then we just lean into the right foot and we come up to standing as gracefully as we're able and then we do that in reverse so you're going to bring your left knee back to the mat with the shin bone parallel to the short edge of the mat and then we see if we can really slowly and gracefully sit back towards the left hip Swing the right knee back into that pinwheel shape. So 90 degree bend behind you. 
And then we lift both knees and roll to the front of the mat again, trying just to keep the hands away from the floor. So right shin is now parallel to the top edge of the mat, left knee in that 90 degree band behind you. You lean into your right knee. See if you can step your left foot as gracefully as possible to the top of your mat, lean into the left foot, come up to standing. And then that in reverse. The right knee comes down to the floor. We sit back towards the right hip. The left leg swings back into the pinwheel. Both knees come up, left shin to the back edge of the mat, leaning into your left knee. Step the right foot behind the left shin and then stepping up to stand. And then the left knee comes down to the mat. Sitting back, swinging that right knee back behind you. Knees come up, transferring over to the top edge of your mat, leaning into your right knee, left foot steps forward, stepping up to standing, right knee down, leaning back, swinging the left knee into the pinwheel, picking up both knees, transferring over to the back of your mat as smoothly as you can, stepping the right foot to the floor, stepping up, left foot beside the right, and then left knee down. And sometimes it happens that we get um, crossed because we start with the wrong leg. <laughs> so if you ended up in a knot, don't worry. Just coming back to this kind of wide, like horse-like straddle shape. And we're just gonna go once more towards the right side. So right knee towards the top edge of the mat, leaning into the right shin, stepping that left foot forward, stepping the right foot up beside the left, and then right knee down. Easing back, left knee into the pinwheel, and then taking the knees back to center. From here, letting the knees fall outwards, we'll gather the, knee, the feet sorry, into center. And start with your feet in nice and close. So the heels relatively close into the groin, seeing if you can feel the outward rotation of the thighs here. So the thighs rolling out of the hip sockets, sitting up nice and tall, and then slowly beginning to ease forward into a forward fold. You could have your hands to your feet here. You could rest your forearms against your inner legs. I like to try a little bit of a, a resistance the training here. So we push the inner legs up into the forearms and we just hold that for a little bit. So you're really telling the legs to turn on through the inner line of the legs. And by knowing, and just keep holding, knowing what we're turning on, we also then know better how to turn it off. So as we squeeze the legs up, really feel that inner line of the leg working and then letting go and noticing maybe that your knees can sink significantly deeper if we've discovered then what that on off switch looks like. And we'll just take a few steady breaths in your own deep fold here. We'll inhale to come up, sliding your heels away from your body. So now we have a kind of diamond shape in the legs. Let the spine be round and then start to ease forward here. And you could have your arms reaching forward of your shins or maybe you like to slide your forearms under your shins and just look for whatever is comfy for you. Again, with this rounder shape in the spine, still letting those thigh bones settle outwards in the hip sockets. And then inhaling to come slowly back up. From here, taking your legs out into a nice wide straddle, find the front edge of your sits bones. So now we'll explore a little bit the difference. You can roll your feet inwards and feel the thigh bones roll inwards, and then roll your feet outwards and feel the thigh bones roll outwards. You can roll your feet inwards and feel how that takes you to the front edge of your sits bones. Roll the feet outwards, feel how that takes you to the back edge of your sits bones. So the spine kind of has to round if we really want to bring the feet outwards. 
So we'll bring the feet back inward so that we're internally rotating the thigh. So we're feeling that roll towards the front edge of the sits bones. And then see if you can keep that shape in your thighs and just point the feet up towards the ceiling. So we're still feeling that the inner lines of the thighs are drawing down to the floor. We're on the front edge of the sits bones, but now the feet are in a neutral position. You can sit up nice and tall. And then as you exhale, you can walk your hands forward and just take a moment to settle into whatever your own sweet edge is. Getting nice and long through the low back. And it might be that a forward fold isn't really available to you here. And what you're looking for instead is more of a, a straight up movement in the spine just to get out of the roundness in the back. That's fine too, if that's where you are. So nice strong legs, using the fronts of the legs again to look for space in the backs of the legs. So more engagement in the front helps us to loosen the back. And again, feeling that little bit of an inward rolling through the upper thighs to help you spread out through the sits bones and stay on the front edge of the sits bones. And then we'll inhale to come back up and pick up your knees with your hands, draw the feet in. Let's we'll turn back towards the front of the mat. And then from here, easing your way down onto your back. You can set the feet about hip width apart. Heels relatively close in towards your sits bones. And then we'll press down through the feet, inhaling to come up into a bridge shape. You might interlace your fingers under your back. You could snuggle your shoulder blades in towards each other, lifting the hips up high, finding space in the chest and the belly, fronts of the hips and the tops of the thighs, so especially maybe in the fronts of the hips, exploring a bit of space just to unfold any of that creasing that we just did. And then we'll exhale to settle the hips back down. Just for a moment, you can take the feet out a little bit wider, let the knees fall in towards each other. Maybe bringing a hand to the belly, hand to the chest, letting your breath fill the space of your hands. And then drawing the knees in towards the chest. We're now finding a rounding in the back. You can take your hands or your arms around your shins, rocking a little bit side to side. Just gently massaging the back against the floor. And then finally releasing the legs and coming for a moment into Shavasana. So you can have your arms and legs straight, or again, might choose to bend the knees or support the knees. Just whatever shape is comfortable for you here. Allowing the thigh bones once more to get really heavy in the hip sockets. Let the hips themselves drop into the floor. Soften the belly, soften your breath. Relax the shoulders, let the weight of the arm bones settle. Let the head be heavy so that the neck can be perfectly relaxed. Just letting go of any effort here to control your body or your breath. Stay for a few quiet moments more.
And then you're going to just gently begin to invite life back into your body, fuller conscious breath. Little movements in your fingers and your toes. And with an inhale, reach the arms up alongside the ears. Take a full stretch back through your fingertips. And then exhaling to bend the knees, rolling onto your right side, finding your way slowly back up to a seat. Almost arriving at a comfortable seat, so cross-legged or whatever works for you. You can keep the eyes closed for a moment here. Just finding a tall seat, space in your spine. Noticing how your hips feel here. Maybe it's comfortable to sit on the floor now. You can find the, the sort of rocking forward to the front edge of the sits bones that gives us a little bit more length in the low back. You can feel if you're in a cross-legged seat, the thigh bones rolling outwards in the hip sockets and the knees comfortably settling towards the floor. And let your shoulders relax. Let the base of your neck be soft. And just take a moment to observe and absorb the effects of your practice. And then bringing your hands together at the center of your chest and thank yourself for your efforts. Namaste. Great. Thanks for joining us. Hope that was helpful. Hope your hips feel a little looser. And we'll see you again soon.